never been introduced at a conference where I do not understand what they just said about me. I have no clue if what he said was nice or like, hey, would you all be nice to this guy, right? Like, you just, you just don't know. Um, well, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Chris Lemma, and uh, I, I think I heard San Diego, so you likely know that I came from San Diego, California, Southern California. Uh, it's probably not the farthest that you could go uh, to a work camp, um, but it is the most delightful reason to leave San Diego. We have a beautiful place and city that we live in, and yet uh, we spent yesterday here, my wife and I, in Puerto, and you have a beautiful city. The river, all the shops, the food. I ate more food than I've eaten in the last week, just yesterday. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, and I eat a lot, so I mean, that's, that's saying something. So thank you so much for having me here. This morning, what I want to do is talk to you about WooCommerce and building online courses. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah we good to go? All right, let's do it. So when we talk about online courses, right, at the core, what are we talking about, right? What is it that we're, we're thinking about? Now, if you are a freelancer, if you are a developer, if you work in an agency, someone will come to you and say, uh, I, I want to build a course. And how successful you are at building it is going to be predicated on how many questions you asked up front. I was telling the guys in the back this morning, I have a friend of mine who built for himself, just he only had one or two courses, he built his entire system on Sensei this several years ago, right? I don't know if you know that. It was, it was a plugin built by uh, WooThemes, right? Now it's owned by Automatic. He built it on Sensei, and it was great. And then eight months later, after having pretty good success, he said, oh, I need this other feature. And I said, you're never going to get that from Sensei. So he replatformed everything to use WP Courseware. Now he was using WP Courseware, and that went great for eight months. And after eight months, he came to me and said, hey, I, uh, I need these other features. I said, WP Courseware will never do that. He said, all right, so what do I do? I said, well, you're going to probably want to look at LearnDash. So he moved to LearnDash, right? Replatformed everything again, used that for about eight months, and then said, uh, I need, I want to be able to trigger these other emails, I want to do these other things. And I said, well, you may want to look at, at uh, Lyft or LMS. And so he replatformed again. So lo and behold, as you can imagine, a few months ago, he and I are talking, and he said, I need this, and I said, stop talking. <laughs> go get like Thinkific or, or Teachable, just go somewhere hosted, drop it all there and stop writing code. Because you're spending a lot of time Building and rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding your platform. And the thing is, that's his own site. The guy's made a million dollars or more in, in revenue, so he can afford to waste his time on that. But most of us, when we're building a platform for other people, we're only going to get paid once. Right? And if that customer comes, I mean, this never happens to you. Okay? But there are other people that have customers that show up two weeks before the end of a project and say, you know, I was thinking I would also like this other feature. <laughs> and you're like, uh, this plugin that I chose is not going to do that. We're going to have to redo everything. And the customer's like, oh, okay, whatever you need to do. You're like, no, 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 you're going to have to pay me more money. No, I'm not paying. I, I paid for what I want, right? Um, so all of it is predicated on the kind of questions you ask. And you can see here a whole bunch of different features, right? Do you need to support course prereqs? Course prereqs is the notion of, of being able to say, you cannot use this course, you cannot subscribe to this course if you haven't done this other thing, taken this other course. That's a course prereq, right? You might say, okay, I need to be able to embed audio or video, you go, great. What about question types, right? When you're gonna create a quiz, can you support different kinds of questions? What about passing scores and retakes? 
the notion that if they don't get a certain score on that quiz, they can take the quiz again, or, right, they can't, depending on if you support retake. Engagement gamification, right? Letting people have that little uh, green check mark, right, that says you passed this lesson, go to the next lesson, right? Or you passed this quiz, now you can go to the next lesson. Progress emails, right? Those emails that get triggered when you finish one thing and then we send you an email that says, hey, good job finishing that. Now get started with this next one, right? Oh my gosh, when you're building an online course, you can do so, and then we got lesson timers and drip release, right, where you're doing sequential release of content. Question timers, right? You go, what's a question timer and how is it different than a lesson timer? Well, again, none of you have ever done this, but some of us, right, in California and in the United States, right, sometimes we drive too fast. Sometimes. And then we get a ticket. The policeman, when he doesn't shoot you, gives you a ticket. <laughs> so you have the ticket, and now you have to go to driver school. But instead of going to a physical building, they now let you watch online. And the first time, I guess I'm divulging more than I want to, the first time I had to do that, right? <laughs> What did I do? Well, they didn't know anything about technology, so I basically scrolled to the end of the video, and then I was done. I was done with an hour video in about one minute. And then I take quiz, take quiz, pass course, done, I'm out. Right? So then smart people started building lesson timers. You must stay on this page for an hour. Or for 58 minutes, even though the video is 60 minutes. And you go, oh, I hate web developers. Right? Because now i got to wait. But that's, that's what a lesson timer is. A question timer is when you're taking a quiz and they're like, uh, you only have this many minutes before you have to go to the next question, right? If you don't know the answer, it's tough. Moving on. And you go, ah. Certificates, course assignments, scheduled release, and completion tracking. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And, and this morning, I'm not going to spend all my time talking about every one of these features and all the plugins and how those map. I have another presentation. You can go find that online at SlideShare and go, oh, li like I literally, I, I show you all the features and then I show you which plugins do which features. So if, if you're trying to figure that out for yourself, for a customer, that's a different presentation, right? Today what I want to talk to you about is the fact that if we're trying to build something where people can make money online selling their knowledge, you really only need these two things. Video embeds, completion certification tracking. That's it. And you go, wait, what about all that other stuff? It's noise. For most of the customers you interact with who are trying to sell online knowledge, what they're talking about, even though you are like going ahead and you're thinking about all the things, oh, you want this, you want this, you want this, you want this. Trust me. You can generate the same amount of revenue from a customer building them a site that has two features rather than one that has 25 features. Because at the end of the day, what matters most, right, is that they get to sell their knowledge. And if you're building an online course, what matters for you is that you're selling your knowledge. And so you need, okay, I need to be able to present video and I need to be able to track how you're moving through the thing. All right, so I want to tell you about three moments in my life where I had to reflect on whether or not I was making good life choices. Uh, there is a service called Clarity.fm. If any of you have ever been there, right? It's Clarity, as in like get more clarity, Clarity.fm. And the way the service works is entrepreneurs predominantly call they, they go online and they see this whole directory of experts and then they schedule a phone call with an expert and they call a number and the expert calls a number and you're on at the same time and the system tracks how many minutes you stay on the line and then they charge the customer by the, by the minute, right? So I, up until recently, I, I haven't checked, but up until recently I was the third most called expert in the network, right? And so I get a lot of phone calls, a lot of people to call, and predominantly they call about membership and online learning, right? So I answer a lot of these questions. 
And so I got a call about two years ago from a guy who said, I've created 16 videos and I want to turn it into an online membership or an online course. 16 videos. I said, what are you doing with the videos today? He said, I burned them to DVDs and I shipped the DVDs out to customers. So I would like to stop doing that and just go online. And I said, okay. I said, what, what are your videos about? He says, well, I'm a barber, right? And I have created these videos that help other barbers learn how to cut hair. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. 16 videos, you cut hair, right? He goes, yeah. Uh, specifically, I do very special fades and, and other styles for African-American male hair. Now, now you're speaking my language, right? Because if you can niche down, right? He would have only been better if he said, I, I teach people how to cut African-American male hair for men under 40 who are right-handed. And then I would have been like, yeah, right? If you can niche down, niche down, because it makes it easy for everybody to know this is for me or this isn't for me, right? And I said, great. Uh, how, do you mind, you know, you mind if I ask, right? How, how popular is, is this system, right? And he said, oh, I, I made a million dollars last year. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where someone can answer one question, how popular is it, right? And in the same moment that he answered the question, he makes you reflect on all your life choices. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You recorded 16 videos and shipped them out on DVDs, and you made a million dollars last year? I hate my life. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Well, I gotta get into this business. He said, well, I can ship you 16 CDs. <laughs> I don't want your DVDs, man. Right? But you know what he had? He had a system that all he needed to do was just put it online, protect it, and let people buy assets. That's it. And you go, okay. I talked to another guy on Clarity, 12 video lessons. This time he had homework. I said, oh, how do you do the homework? He's like, oh, I just, uh, I just send an email. I said, okay, so you have videos and emails. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Uh, I teach vocal lessons. Voice lessons, that's cool, okay. Uh, he said, I, I do it, I'm here in Manhattan. I do it in New York City, and I do it for people who are trying out on Broadway to be Broadway stars. They're good at acting, they're good at dancing, they're not so good at singing. Huh. Okay. Do you mind if I ask you how, how's it going, how well this is, how many people are logging in concurrently, like I'd like to understand, to help you make a suggestion about what's Well, it's pretty good, right? Over a million dollars in revenue last year. I suck. <laughs> I have not had one single year of a million dollars in revenue, much less a million dollars in revenue from 12 videos. Right? You go, oh. There's another guy who created 50 videos. I respect him, because that's work, right? 50 videos. One of the first guys to build a learning how to be a web developer from scratch. Like you know nothing, and then you become a web developer, right? Sold it on uh, Udemy, and 50 lessons, 50 videos, most of the videos under five minutes, right? 50 of these videos, 2012, 2013, generate a million dollars a year. All 50 videos. And you go, wow. I, I gotta figure out what I can teach that will generate that kind of money. But what I do know is, when we're talking about an online system, right, I need to be able to do two things, right? Protect and present content and help people understand how to progress. Because here's the thing when we talk about buying, and you may have had this experience, how many of you have ever bought a book? At a bookstore or Amazon, doesn't matter how you buy, right? You bought a book, right? Now, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. You bought a book online or at a physical bookstore. Now, keep your hands up if you didn't read the book. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm in a whole room of liars <laughs> or psychopaths, right? Many of us have bought books we haven't read. And do you know why? 
from a neuroscience perspective, in your brain, the chemical release that happens when you make a purchase is virtually identical to the chemical release when you complete a book or a course. When you think about what that means, right? It means that you congratulate yourself for the purchase, even if you never read the book or watch the course. How many of you have bought an online course that you have not finished? See, there's a little bit more honesty now. <laughs> You're starting to wake up. Yeah. Yeah, we all do it. We all do it. The release, the chemical release in our brains that says, oh my god, I'm so glad I finally bought that domain. I mean, none of you have that problem, right? You're like, oh, I bought that domain, I bought that video course, I bought that book, I bought, I bought, I bought. And you're like, yeah, but what'd you do with it? Yeah, I'm gonna get to that. I have a rule, I'll just give it to you for free, right? I have a rule that says if you buy a domain and then you do nothing with it for 365 days, I'm not allowed to renew it. Not allowed to renew it. Why? Because for 365 days, I did nothing. Right? So clearly, it's, it's, if it's not going to happen within the first year, it's not going to happen. Right? The average rate that people complete an online course is less than 30%. And you go, wow, that sucks. Which is why it's important when we're building online programs. Our goal has to not just be to protect and present content. Our goal also has to be to make sure we're tracking completion so we can follow up with people and help them get over the finish line. Right? Another guy in the WordPress space, right, a guy named Troy Dean, has created a bunch of online material. And one of the things that Troy and I talked about a long time ago, one of the things that the key focus on is just completion, right? I think they're getting their students to complete their courses at a rate of 60% per month. That's double the average, right? You know, that's fantastic. More people will, because they got to the end and they learned something and they're able to actually have some mastery, they will come back and buy the second thing and the third thing and the fourth thing if you help them finish. Does that make sense? All right. So there are, and I mentioned this earlier, right? There's a whole bunch of different uh, plugins, different ways. You can, if you were building an online course on top of WordPress, there's a bunch of different ways you could do it, right? WP Courseware, Lyft OS, Sensei, WP Lunchbox, LearnDash. We're going to talk about WooCommerce. That's, that's the point of today, is to show you how to do this WooCommerce. And some of you are going to say, yeah, but can't I use WooCommerce with these other plugins? Right? And you go, yeah. Yeah, you can. Right? At the end of this presentation, I'll give you a link to a free online course, four, four video lessons of how to do WooCommerce with WP Courseware. Right? So you can see it and go, oh, that's another way to do it. Today, I'm going to show you how to do it just with uh, WooCommerce and, and one or two additional plugins, but not a, not a learning plugin. And that begs the question, right? If you can use one of these guys, which are great, Learn Dash is incredible, Libro OS is great, W Courseware is great. If you can use those, why would you not use them? And it goes back to me telling you, every one of these plugins, while they have tons of features, are also opinionated about their features. This is the way to do it. And it would be awesome if all our customers had the same opinions. But they don't. Most of our customers don't even have opinions. They just have ideas. And many of those ideas, after they had other ideas. And some of their new ideas are exactly in the opposite direction of their earlier ideas. And yet they have no additional budget ideas. So in that scenario, I try and restrict the kinds of plugins I'm going to use that will lock me into a particular approach that means later I'm going to have to do a lot more work. So what we're going to do is walk through a very simple approach today so that you go, oh, okay, that, that works. I can do that. I can do that. You can do that. And if we have to make some modifications, I'll show you how I do it, right? But before we do that, right, I want to talk 
talk about the design of your course. Right? If you're creating a course for someone else, or if you're creating something for yourself, I want to talk about the design. Because here's the thing we fall, we fall prey to, right? Here's the mistake many of us make. We think that we need to focus on the mechanics, the specifics, the how-tos, right? How to click through and do each of the steps. And if you're an engineer, right, you've already gone through all the other reasons and rationales for why you're going to do what you do. So when you go looking, you're like, let me just find how to do this. I just need to get to the how part. Most customers need more than how, right? So don't just focus on how. Focus on why. Why do we do this? Why do we... I have yet to show you what we're going to do in WooCommerce. Most of what I've been doing is talking to you about why. Why to do this, why not to do that, why to use this, and why not to... The whys are incredibly important because they help you stand out. They help anchor you as an expert or with expertise. They help you if you're working with a customer and they help your customer working with their audience to know, ah, this is part of the rationale. This is why we're doing what we're doing, right? Not just this is how to do it. Does that make sense? It didn't? Does, does it make sense? Awesome. All right. All right. So one more last thing. If you're doing this for yourself, if you, if you have, if you've developed new knowledge and you want to present that knowledge to the world, right, I want to tell you that most of us do this backwards. Most of us start with number three. Let's build our website, build our online learning course. Then let's put all our content into it and then let's go build the community. That, that's, that's exactly the opposite way to do it, right? The right way to do it, build an audience, Build a community, build a group of people who are begging you to create content. Build the content. Get the feedback of the content. Work with customers, work with prospects. Help refine your content and then package it into a course. Package it into the course is the last step, not the first step. Right? I, I have, over the course of the last, I don't know, it's 13 years that I've been using WordPress. I have created a whole bunch of content for WordPressLum.com. I've written ebooks on a bunch of different things. I've created online courses. I, I've, I've done all sorts of stuff, right? Almost everything that I present, almost everything I create, comes after I've been doing it with people. I want to make sure you're clear on that, right? Almost every sentence that I have used in this talk so far has been tested with other people. Every story, every notion, every strategy, every approach has been born out of conversation, communication, community, interaction, so that I understand what people are thinking about, what questions they have, what they're working through. By the time it comes out in presented format, I know what kinds of questions you might have, and then I go and try and answer them before I get to the next piece. All of that is done. Many of us try to just jump straight into, let me just produce the content, let me produce the, the site itself, and push it out, and then we're wondering, how come no one's buying? How come, how come this didn't get the sales I wanted? I can't tell you the number of friends I have who say, I'm launching a new course, and I'm great, how'd it go? And at the end of like three months, and I've watched Facebook ads, and I've watched Twitter, and I've watched all their emails come into me, and all their friends and our friends have all emailed those emails out. We're all said and done, three months later, I'm like, how many did you sell? Well, it wasn't as good as I wanted. What does that mean? Twelve. Twelve? You sold twelve seats? And that's at 50 bucks, right? That's, that's 600 bucks. 600 US, right? 600 US? That's not enough to motivate you to get up and start working on anything. Why would you do it for six? Well, I thought it would be a lot more. But did you test it? Did you work in the construct of a community, a group of people? Did you work it through so that you knew exactly what their challenges were, what they were asking? Not what's in your head, but what they need. Right? Did you skip over the why and get straight to the how and realize that most people were back on the why before they ever got to the how? So we've got to get the order right. Does that make sense? Awesome. 
Okay, so what we're going to do today, what I'm going to try and do, right, is I'm going to try and do some things by showing you some stuff live, right, from that computer, hoping that everything doesn't fall apart. And I'm going to show you with just a few plugins. And by the way, I know some of you are taking pictures of the slides. Um, I'll also show you where all the slides are, right? So you can, you can have the slides. They're already posted online, right? Um, but I'm going to use WooCommerce. I'm going to use my favorite WooCommerce extension, which is called Memberships from a company called Skyverge. I'm also going to use a little plugin most people have never heard of called Don't Be Complete by Paul Jarvis and Zach Gilbert. And then I'm going to use the Astra theme. It is a free theme. It's also pretty darn fast. Uh, my friends and I over at Liquid Web evaluated 50 different WooCommerce themes, and Astro is the fastest of them all, even faster than Scorpio. So that's my kind of default when I'm playing this stuff. So I'm going to show you how this all works together. Does that make sense? Right? But I want to highlight one last thing. I know some of you are like, when is he going to get to the keyboard? <laughs> I want to say one last thing. You're going to see that in my sample here, as much as I wanted to, right? I really wanted to create an entire course for you to watch as we do this that's all about cutting and lighting cigars. Because I feel like you need that. <laughs> right? But that would have been too difficult to do and not light up a cigar while I was doing it. And then sprinklers, and then it would be a mess. And so we just said, let's skip all that. So I'm going to show you a little course I just created, right, on Facebook ads. And one thing you're going to notice None of the videos in this course are my own. Turns out, there's as much value in knowing how to develop curriculum as there is in knowing all the content. If you know what questions should be answered in what order, then you go online and find videos that match those curriculum sets and put them in, and you can create online courses with content you didn't even create. Does that make sense? It's not illegal. It's not wrong. All of those courses, all those videos are out there on YouTube available to you. The question is, do you have a way of structuring the why before the how? So you're going to see a sample course here that I created, and I didn't create any of the content. I created the curriculum behind the content. Does that make sense? All right, let's get into the demo. Now you know this, right? You know that the moment we go to a live screen, that there's just a good chance all this is going to break and go wrong, right? <laughs> I don't have to tell you that. You guys are experts at this. By the way, I told you that I would share this. Oh, now I'm not, you're not seeing my screen. All right, let's put a mirror this way. So we're going to have a lot of fun here. All right. Uh, <laughs> Slideshare.net. If you want to see these slides, they're at slideshare.net slash C is in Chris, F is in Frank, Lemma, L-E, M is in Mary, A. Right? So if you go to slideshare.net slash CF Lemma, the very first presentation there is going to be these slides. Does that make sense, everyone? You got it? Okay. So now we are... You're seeing my screen, right? So this is this is the screen. This is the home page for the site. You'll see that it's already showing me the, the mobile piece because of my display. I don't think there's... Does that help at all? No, not really. Okay. Um, so this is a local environment, right? My local computer. Um, and it's wcporter.local, it's, it's on my box, it's not like you're going to be able to hit it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to show you what we have uh, going on. So let's go down to our plugins. And we're going to talk a little about these plugins. Okay, so I told you we had, I was using Astra, that's the theme. They have a pro plugin if you bought it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, they have a pro plugin that allows you to do some additional WooCommerce stuff. I, I'm not doing a lot with it, uh, but it's just here. 
also have code snippets. And we're going to talk about code snippets, but just by show of hands, how many of you have ever heard of or used code snippets before? <coughs> just a couple of you. You're really going to like that plugin, right? Uh, I was going to, at one point, I was going to show you that you can do the same stuff with Sensei and, and Toby Courseware, but I'm not going to show that to you today. Um, so this is WooCommerce, right, that we have, and this is memberships, which we talked about from Skyverge. Uh, I, I just dropped in PayPal. That's not any kind of commitment to telling you PayPal is worth using. That's just saying it exists. Uh, WP Complete, which we talked about, Zach Gilbert and Paul Jarvis. And another one called WP Disable. How many of you have used WP Disable? Only a few of you, right? Uh, you should also check that one out. It's by Optimization.io. It helps you clean up a whole bunch of extra little things, right? So it uh, turns off some things, etc. So here we are, right? We have a very limited number of plugins talking, right? And uh, if I go into the settings for WooCommerce, right, you are going to notice when I get out to memberships, right? I'm saying hide the content only, but don't hide the whole thing, right? So don't show a 404. Just say, hey, heads up, right? You, you don't have access to see it, right? And I'll show you how we do that. Uh, in products, right, hey, if they purchase it and then they purchase it again, right, layer on the additional membership length if that's something that's going on. We don't have any membership length. And lastly, we have messages, right? And these messages will say, hey, uh, let's look at page restrictions. Because right? every single lesson that I created here is a page. And so I can say, hey, I can change the text. And instead of saying to access this page, I can change the text to simply say, hey, to access this lesson, you must purchase in the name of the product. Right? This lesson is only available to, to course members, not to members. Right? And this lesson is part of your membership, but not yet. You'll gain it. That's if you're drifting it out. Right? So I'm not writing any code. I'm just literally going into the messages and making tweaks to make it a little better when someone gets to a page that they're not, they don't have the right to see. Does that make sense? Okay, that's the configuration options in the settings for WooCommerce for Skyverge's product, right? Um, if I come over here and take a look, uh, let's see, you know, Don't Be Complete is here. In the settings for Don't Be Complete, there's almost no settings, right? Almost nothing you have to be worried about. Uh, what kind of student role is a subscriber? I'm mostly doing this on pages. Uh, the button text will say mark is complete, make it red. Uh, when it's done, make it dark gray. When I'm showing you a graph of progress, dark gray and light gray, and save changes. Not a lot to this, okay? Pretty, pretty simple. So what we're gonna do is come back out to the site. I have a site, I've created a little uh, ad on the right-hand side, but it's also in the navigation, right? Buy my course. When I say buy my course, I put the image there, and then you see, this is my Facebook ads course for $9.99, right? I have to write sales copy, right? Sales copy says here's what you're gonna learn, and also who are you? How do you know that you're the right person to buy, right? So, okay, I'm trying to qualify, and I'm trying to let you self-select. Yes, I'm that person, yes, that's what I wanna know. Now I'm interested in buying. Does that make sense? Too many of us are just working under the assumption, hey, I of course buy it. They're like, uh, sell me on it, right? So have the right content for that, right? Um, and then you have the add to cart. So let's talk about that product. So this is the product. This is a WooCommerce product, right? And the WooCommerce product has it's in a course called Courses, right? It has an image, it has a price, it is a virtual product, right? I'm not shipping anything, it's a simple product, I'm not making anything complex, no variations. So simple product, virtual, $9.99. And here's a couple things that are fun, right? So uh, I can say, hey, this is only sold individually, meaning there's no quantity button. I, I don't expect that you're going to buy three versions of the course, so I can mark it as just buy it individually so that I don't have one more thing the user has to click on before they hit add. It's just add to cart. There's no quantity by saying, hey, so. Now, if I wanted to say uh, there's only 20 spots, only 20 seats, I could check manage stock and 
and put 20, and it would show, hey, there are 20, 20 items left, and then 19 items left, and then 18, right? So you have a natural count. Now, you probably have to go in and override the text so it doesn't say 20 items left. You might want to say 20 seats left, and then 19 seats left, etc. But there is a way for you to do that very easily within the system, right? So sold individually is a key part. I put all of the product description in what's called the product short description. That's the one that shows up right there on the page. And then we get this guy, right? This is the memberships meta box that shows up after I've created a membership. So let's go create a membership. I'll show you how it's done. In WooCommerce, the moment I activated Skyverge's extension called memberships, the moment I did that, I got this menu item. So when I go to that menu item, I can go to membership plan. Here is my course. So let's talk about this for a second, right? I am creating a membership. And you're saying, well, wait, I thought we were talking about courses. Yes. What I'm doing is creating a product that you can buy from WooCommerce with a price. That product was $9.99. That was a simple product, right? A simple virtual product. But then what I did was I linked that product to a membership. I said, when you buy this product, automatically put them in the membership. And I'm going to show you why that becomes really, really powerful. Is because then you have the situation where people can buy one course, then buy another course, then buy another course, and just be in multiple different memberships. And you can layer on additional benefits in that, which is not always the case with if you're using other membership plugins or you're using other solutions, and they don't let you have multiple concurrent Play at the same time. My, my favorite membership plugin that doesn't support the dual concurrent membership is Restrict Content Pro. I know they're working on it this year. I know they'll eventually release it. But until then, you go, okay, let me use another solution. So this is, I buy the product, I get put right in the membership. So you go, yeah, but what does membership do? Well, the membership is going to protect content, right? So that's what you're seeing here, right? You go, hey, I have the general. That's the definition of the product. It's based on a product purchase. When they purchase this product, I want to tie them into the membership. They have it unlimited, right? And then I come over to restrict content. And I say, I want you to restrict pages. And then I put the main table of content and the five steps. I put them in here. What does that mean, of course? It means I have to have created those pages, right? Now, what I'm going to do when I create pages is I just go create empty pages because I can always put the content in later, right? But I first create those pages. After I create the pages, then I go to the membership and I create the membership, right? Then I go to the WooCommerce product and create the product, link it to the membership, and go to the membership, link it to the pages. Does that make sense? You work almost in reverse order. Start with the final stuff you need and back your way into putting it all together, right? So here we have instructions, what you need. Now let's, let's take a look at this page because it highlights Right? What I was telling you before. Okay? Notice that only one lesson is teaching you about Facebook ads. Number five, creating high converting ads. It is 47 minutes. There's a lot of material in there. That's awesome. But you know what? Introduction to this course, what should you know before you get started, right? Hey, I, I'm going to spend six minutes on the intro. I'm going to spend 23 minutes just telling you what you should know before you even do anything. And then why is this even important? Spend another five minutes helping you understand why you need to be thinking about Facebook ads. And then, right, the biggest mistake you don't want to make, I don't care if you have a clue what's hidden behind that title. You know you want to watch that. Right? Because I just told you this is the biggest mistake you should not make. You're like, wait, what is it? Uh, you have to pay $9.99 and find out. <laughs> That's how that works. Right? Notice five lessons, and only the fifth one is the hey, I'm going to give you the content. I'm going to tell you what you came here for. The other four are the why, not the how. Does that make sense? It's critically important you get that right. Because if you just jump into all the technical how, 
you haven't motivated anyone. But if you groom the on-ramps so they are more and more interested, look what happens, right? Introduction, okay, I want that. Okay, let's go, let's go. Oh, six, I'm done already. Awesome, check the box, I'm 20% complete. See them already? Boom, I'm feeling good. Then, let's go to the next one. What do I need to know? Ooh, 20 minutes. All right, let's get through it. But yeah, okay, okay, I'm with you, I'm with you. All right, important space we ask. Get it done fast, five minutes, okay, let's do it. I'm ready, okay, I'm so ready. Oh, wait a minute. There's one more before I get to the good stuff. This is a mistake, don't make this mistake. Don't make this mistake, I swear to God, you don't want to make this mistake. Anyways, okay, okay, now I'm, so, I'm so jazzed. Now, what happens? What happens? They've invested six minutes, 23 minutes, five minutes, four minutes, they've invested all this time before the last one. And they're also going to be told that four-fifths of their work is done. They are 80% complete. How many of you would be motivated to finish if you were at 80% complete? The rest of you suck ass. <laughs> right? Of course you would. You'd be like, yeah, I'm basically done. I should just watch the last 45 minutes. There is a science to creating curriculum. There is a science to thinking through the psychology of wooing people into the course and getting it done right. And when you do it right, people are 80% done before they're ready to click the main thing they came for. And they're like, yeah, now I've got to watch this. Right? So we create five pages. On five pages, we put five videos, right? <coughs> what you need to know before you get started, here is the page, right? The page says what you need to know before you get started, it's a video, right? I swear, I didn't make this video, someone else's video, I just found it, right? <laughs> but what I had to do, I know some of you are like, cheeky bastard, but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing, I promised to teach you, I didn't promise to offer every video, right? I promised to collect the right information and present it to you, and I went and looked at a whole bunch of videos before I said, this is the right one for here. It's the right one on topics, it's the right one on length, it's the right one to embed. And then I just embedded it. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know if he's going to be happy that I put it in my fake course, but you know what? I'm super happy that I did, because that means I didn't have to create this course. Right? I didn't have to create this video. But look at the bottom, right? Mark is complete. Here's the great thing. When I click Mark is complete, it's going to make it complete, but do you see what happens on the right? Oh, man. You don't feel as good as I feel, because you didn't click the button. <laughs> but I'm feeling really good right now. And look, I'm going to get the checks, right? I'm progressing. And that is critical. There's actual science, right? Two Stanford brothers wrote a whole book on this, right? And, uh, and what they did was they ran this experiment, right? They ran an experiment at a car wash, OK? And the car wash had a little, had a little uh, coupon card, right, that they would punch for the hole. So every time you went and got your car wash, you'd get a punch. And it was a car wash that had eight stars around. And they would clip each time. And so when you got eight, you got a free car wash. OK? And so they said, that's great. Let's come, let's come help you, right? The Heath brothers basically went to this car wash and said, this is your normal card. Let's make another card. We'll put 10 stars around it. You have to get 10 stars to get, you know, clips, right? 10 hole punches in there to get a car wash. Except when you get your first car wash, we're going to give you two for free. So it's the same. It's exactly the same. By the time you're done, you either have one of eight complete or you have three out of 10 complete. Statistically speaking, right? You still have seven car washes at $10 each. You still have the exact same amount of money that you have to spend to get a free car wash, right? So the results should be the same, right? Wrong. The people who got three hole punches checked came back more often and got free ones done sooner because they were three tenths the way down their journey. They were committed versus the people who were one eighth away and stopped committing. Are you creating your course the right way? Probably not. Right? This is the benefit of creating video lessons that are two minutes to three minutes long. Because before you know it, you're done with that one, and then you're done with the next one, you're done with that one, and you're like, how many of you have kids?
kids. Okay. I have children. I love reading. But because I have children, I have no time to read. <laughs> but my favorite American author is James Patterson. And if you've ever seen a James Patterson book, the hallmark of a James Patterson book is that every chapter is about two pages, maybe two and a half, which means I can get a whole chapter done before the next crisis in our house. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm not dead. My son is screaming, ah! my wife is yelling back, ah! and I'm like, I just got one paragraph. Just one paragraph to go, I'm like, okay, now I can finish chapter 37, right? Or chapter 186, right? But this is not, I don't care how many chapters in the book, because I get a sense of completion every two and a half pages. When you're creating your courses, create them with a lot of starts and stops. Create them so that people feel like they are accomplishing things quickly and easily, right? So I created five pages. Then I took five videos, put them on the five pages. That's just regular, that's, that's not complicated stuff, right? Let's go to this page real quick, real quick. Right? I'm going to edit page. I want to show you how complicated this page is. <laughs> you got to wait for it to load. Don't start, like, it, it's just someone else's iPhone. That's, that's what it is, right? That's all. Then at the bottom of this, Right? The complete gives me a meta box. I want this page to be completable. I think they made a cover. I name it, this is my Facebook ads course, and then I say, hey, when you have completed it, where do you want me to redirect people? Redirect them to the table of contents page. This is all here, automatic, right? I just go here, here's the URL, just put it there. You go, okay. So you remember, right? I was here. I was there, I clicked it, and then what did it do? It took me back here. Automatically. I didn't have to create additional navigation, I didn't have to create different breadcrumbs, I didn't have to do anything else, right? Because it's all right there. I just say, okay, mark is complete. Same thing. Same event. Same pages, right? So you know, okay, so you did this by going to the membership area, and you loaded in a plan, and in the plan, you went to the protected content or restricted content and you put it on the pages. Is that it? Are we done? And you go, almost. Almost. Because here's what's going to happen, right? People are going to go when they, when they, after they bought your course. Oh, by the way, the buy course, I didn't show you that. I'll show it to you real quick. The buy my course is a custom link. What is it a custom link to? The actual product. Default for WooCommerce, it's going to create shop and put shop in your navigation. Do I want to show shop with one product? No. It makes me look like I'm a loser. Because I only have one product. So I just go to the navigation and I put the link to my one product. Now I'm not a loser. Now I'm just focused. Right? There it is. Buy my course. One page. So I said, that's, that's fine. That's all I need. Right? But now let's say they did buy it. They're going to go into the My Account section. And in the My Account section, they'll see memberships. And look, here's all my content. It's all in this protected space. They also have you know, notes and whether or not I want to manage this, this account, right? This is it. Now, when you look at this and you see this list of courses list this way, you're going to go, wait, if I did it at home, I can see it this way. I saw the exact opposite, five, and then four, and then three, and then two, and then one. And you go, yeah, because the membership plugin, when it defaults to present content, automatically presents it in a uh, descending order, right? And if I want it in the ascending order, I have to change stuff. Well, remember I told you about Adobe Snippets, right? So let's go find our snippets here. So these are our snippets. And you go, wait, what was WP Snippets again? WP Snippets allows me to have one plugin, the WP Snippets plugin, that acts like my functions.php. So if you've ever been on the web and you've read something that says, just take this code and stick it in functions.php, that's sticking it in your theme. This is a plugin. I'm sticking it in a little repository of code as a plugin rather than tied to the theme. I can change themes and not have anything break, right? And here I have three different little snippets of code, right? So 
one of the things memberships does is it shows you all the protected content that you have rights to, but it shows you the content type, like page, 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 page. I don't need to show them that. So this is a snippet that says, hey, remove the uh, content type and also remove the excerpt. I, I don't want to show any of that. By the way, I don't have an excerpt. I just uploaded someone's video or, or their iframe into my, I have no excerpt, so it's going to be blank anyway. So I have a blank column. So just go and unset these two columns and then return whatever's left from the columns. Here's a beautiful thing. I didn't write this code. Skyverse, the company that's behind the membership plugin, has a GitHub repo with a bunch of this code in it. So you just go to their repo and you see different things. You go, yeah, I want that, I want that. And you bring it in, and drop it in, put it in the code. You go, oh, Chris, you're really good at not writing any code. Yes, I am. What about sorting the contents so that it shows Lesson one, and then two, and then three, and then four. Yep, guess what? They wrote it as well. Just paste it in. You know, I, I know you probably know this. You're paid the same when a customer site is complete, whether you authored every single line of code or whether someone else did. Right? So the trick is get really good at some things, deliver that value, and let some other tools, right, particularly those that have a lot of flexibility, become the ones you sit with. It's why I love WooCommerce, it's why I love memberships, because I can do a million things with these things. And all I had to do was go put in three snippets and make it functionally on. There's another snippet, I just didn't have time, right? There's another snippet that will come in here, right? In my account, instead of saying membership, it will say uh, your courses, right? I'll, sh I'll show you this way, right, because I just didn't drop it in. This is one of my buddies that I helped build his online course. We did three launches last year. Three open, open the course thing for a week and then close it down. Each week we generated over 150,000. Uh, three different weeks, right? So almost half a million dollars in revenue from three weeks of letting people buy this course, right? Now we've launched two more courses. It's, it's a, a, a blast, right? So I'm gonna come in here, go to my account just to show you this, right? When I log into my account, memberships isn't there. It's the same too. I'm using the same plugin, right? I just added a snippet that lets me put purchase courses, purchase courses instead of memberships. Now, you can also put another snippet that replaces this membership with whatever, right? You just get the title and then send the title back instead of their default, right? To the slug. But here's the course that I purchased. These are memberships. They're memberships. They're just called courses in the title. Does that make sense? I think, if I'm right, I'm going to come take a look, but I think I've shown you everything that's in here. I've shown you snippets, WooCommerce, memberships, and WP Complete. I didn't show you WP Disable, so I'll, I'll, I'll jump over here just for a second. One of the things I like is it has some WooCommerce options to help me optimize the site, right? So, hey, um, Disable the scripts, all the different WooCommerce scripts that are up. Disable them on pages that are not WooCommerce pages, right? In this case, I have no reviews. I don't need any reviews, so get rid of those. Defer the cart fragments. I can even make it so that WooCommerce has an option when they add to cart, they immediately go to the cart. In fact, I don't know if I have that set here, but I will show you setting that because that's an important one. Redirect to car after successful edition, right? So what I normally do is I just say, hey, if they add it on a site like this when they're buying a course, when they add it, take them straight to the end. Get them to pay, get rid of all the distractions, you don't need to do anything else, just drive it from there. All right, so I think that's all that's there. And then I promised you one last thing, so I'm gonna You should see this. Yep. So, I created another four <laughs> video lessons. These are actually my videos. I didn't just take them from someone else on YouTube. <laughs> These are four videos on how to create an online membership, online course using WooCommerce. But in that case, 
I did it with WP Courseware, which is one of my favorite Courseware plugins. So if you do need timers or question banks, if you do need certificate completions, if you do need some of those things, this uh, URL will have the four videos. It's there for free. You don't have to register. You just go and watch them. Um, and I'll walk you through exactly how to do it there as well. My name is Chris Summa. I do work at Liquid Web. You can find me on Twitter at Chris Summa. Thank you very much. Yeah, you mentioned people get, get tired when, when they click the button to, to mark as complete. And I, I know that happens. But uh, a big problem with, with these courses is, is people actually, they don't engage and they don't complete much of the courses, like you said. So I'm wondering, do you have any insights or tips on how to increase that engagement? Because uh, on projects we've done for courses, that ends up being a problem in the long run. So the best, the best approach that I know of is to make the videos short. Most people don't finish not because they hate your content, although if you have really cruddy content, you should fix that. But most people don't stop because you have cruddy content. They stop because someone's crying in the other room, or there's you know, an issue at work, or they have to do something urgent, and so they leave, and you're in the middle of a 29-minute lesson. Don't make it a 29 minute lesson, make it a two minute lesson, followed by another one, followed by another one, hence the James Patterson reference. The more you do that, the more people feel like it's easy to get through the next thing, rather than having big long lessons, right? Even if you record it big and long, you know, you can edit it afterward and break it up into lots of little ones, right? So um, the, the length of the video is one of the most significant ways to help people feel like they can get through it. Now, if, you, if that still doesn't work, right, there are other plugins like uh, Learn Dash that will put timers on it so that you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can click the mark is completed. That, that button will show up, the, you know, basically uh, grayed out and, and not, not enabled. And then after the time has passed, it will become enabled and then you can click it. So that, that is an alternative way to do it. Thanks. Can I start something uh, around accountability? So other people making uh, the learners accountable for what they've had uh, learned. Have you tried something like that? Yeah, sure. We've got accountability. Uh, again, there are different plugins that do more elaborate work, right? Um, and the elaborate work, and even with this, right, you could hook into the fact that someone completed it and then trigger off an email to tell someone else they completed it. Uh, they also have short codes for showing you, right? One of the most effective ones, W Complete has a short code that will show you how you're doing compared to everybody else who's in that course, right? So peer pressure is one of my favorite tools. It's not accountability. It is that notion of you realizing everybody else is ahead of you, and then you suddenly want to start moving a little faster, right? So uh, WP Complete has that. Other plugins have that as well. Leaderboards, right? LibreOMS has uh, a lot of leaderboard stuff that, you know, if you present, then you realize, ooh, I'm a slacker. Okay, I should watch two more videos real quick. I, I did this years ago. We built an internal LMS for employees, right? Our company had 200 employees, and uh, the CEO was not convinced that we could teach basic business to our first level managers, right? He's like, these managers all suck, right? And I said, well, many of them do, but I think there's a few that are probably, just, they just need extra training. So we built this online system where people could get additional training. And he was like, eh, I just don't know, I don't know. So then I sent him a login, right? It's an internal WordPress app, but it had a leaderboard on the side, right? We were giving points for achievements that they moved through. And he was last because he hadn't logged in and done anything. So I just took a snapshot of him being last and sent him the text. By the end of the weekend, he was in first. <laughs> he didn't care about the material. He just hated being last. That works, right? So, accountability and peer pressure, that can also help you. Thanks for that question. Any others? Hi, Chris. Uh, I'm assuming that the system that you showed us today, you can integrate with WooCommerce subscriptions and do, let's say, a monthly subscription for a quarter. Um, yep. My question is, how would you, let's say a user, uh, they pay every month, but they stop logging in. 
Yep. So that's an indicative for you that, okay, this guy is, we're losing him. Yep. So how can you integrate that into some marketing automation tools to send them reminders and some yeah. stuff like that? Yeah, you can definitely do all of that. Here's the one thing that I tell most people building courses. Charge people once a quarter or once a year and give them the opportunity to actually get through more before you ding them on their card again. When you start billing people monthly and they haven't achieved as much, they're gonna have their own incremental regret. If you've ever, you guys look very, very fit, okay? So I'm just gonna tell you from my experience, I once, this is hard to believe, right? I signed up for a gym membership and I didn't go. <laughs> but they paid me, or they charged me every month, right? The first month they charged me and I didn't go, I didn't feel bad. It's like 10 bucks, right? The second month, I'm 20 bucks in, right? Still not feeling too bad. It's 20 bucks, right? Third month, fourth month, fifth month, sixth month. Now six months in, they've been charging me this whole time. Now I'm mad. My incremental regret has gotten bigger and bigger because they have a system. They know that I haven't walked in the building. So they should contact me and go, hey, dude, you're not using it, and da, 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 but they're never going to do that, right? So what happens when I'm finally at the six-month mark? I call them and say, cancel. I don't ever want, and they're like, oh, let me try and recover you. Let me try, and I'm like, no. My incremental regret has layered on so much that at this point, I'm at the breaking point. I want nothing more from you. The problem in memberships, right, is that we all do the same thing. We ding them 10 bucks, then another 10 bucks, then another 10 bucks. We're super happy because they haven't quit yet. But when they do call to quit, there's no getting them back. Because they are tired of paying for something they're not using. So spread out some of the payments. Then do the follow-up, right? If they've hit a certain amount, send them an email, tell them, great job. If, they've admit, if they haven't logged in a certain period of time, cash it, send them an email, hey, Love to see you back, right? Here's some quick things you can do to get caught up, right? Here's the peer pressure. You, you want to do all those things. All I just want to mention, right, is when you're building them every single month and they're not logging in, you're going to have a harder time. If you're not following up, you're going to have a harder time when they do call to try and do a downgrade offer because at that point, they're just they're done with you. Does that make sense? Thanks. All right, I think you have a break. So let's do one more. We have one right down here. And then, uh, and then I'm going to let you go get your coffee or whatever else you're going to do at break. Do we have a mic that we can bring down here? We have been discussing a lot about the optimizing and trying to make the client uh, complete the process. But when it's a one-time buy, like we bought the process from a business perspective, we don't even care if you finish it or not, right? You just bought it, you paid it. If, it if, if the content is good and it, uh, the user does not finish the course, it's user follow. We did our best. We put the content available. Uh, what's, what's like the business purpose of trying to optimize for that? Is like in the future to try to sell more courses and there is it, the probability of them buying more if they finish the entire? What's like the, the main yeah. business purpose yeah. of trying to make them finish? Totally, totally makes sense. And I know that's, that's where a lot of people sit, is the whole, hey, it's a long time, they pay me, if they watch it, great, if they don't, I don't care. Here's the thing, right? I, oh, it's in my bag. I have an iPhone 10, right? It's, a, it's like a $1,000 phone. Do you know why Apple sells a $1,000 phone? So they can sell a $100 case, and then a $50 screen protector, and then a $30 charger, right? Because if the phone was 200 bucks, I'm not paying more than five bucks for the cover, right? I mean, the reality is, when you build courses, what you don't want to do is build one course and then go after a whole new topic and build a second course. Then you have to go get new audiences. What you want to do is build one anchor course and then build a lot of satellites around it that are all add-ons, right? Because then you get return purchasing. And if you make the main course expensive, say $299, and every add-on is $29, you're going to get a lot of those $29 hits. But you're going to get them if you can help people get across the finish line for the first one. Does that make sense? So the business value here is that even though you may have $299 for the main course, you can potentially generate 50 to 100% more revenue on additional courses, add-ons, right? And they can even be much shorter because now you have realized, okay, this is the main content I covered, but while I did this, let's say I was doing the Facebook ads, right? And then I said, oh, by the way, 
here are the, here are the copy, you know, here's, here's an, a little course just on copywriting to convert ads, right? Here's another one on design elements. And I just create all these little guys and you go, yeah, I need that, I need that, I need that, right? Um, so that's the business case. Thank you very much. I know you guys have a great day.